Okay, everybody, this is Mooney Dash Cam. Today, we are in the Throgs Neck section of the Bronx. We're going to be going to the Hells Angels Clubhouse right in this neighborhood over here. I've done a video similar to this before, but I never actually got out and filmed the clubhouse, which I will be doing today. So let's flip this around and get into it. All right, the address that we are going to is 241 Long Street Avenue. It's one of their newer clubhouses after they moved out of their clubhouse in Manhattan on East 3rd Street. They left that clubhouse, they sold it for about $8 million, and they moved to this one December of 2019. They bought it in August of 2019, but December of 2019 they moved in. They bought it for about $1.25 million. And they also bought about a half dozen properties in this neighborhood for Hells Angels to live at. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, at Mooney-Cam. I post in there pretty much every single day. You get a lot of content from me there. Also, please leave suggestions for future videos in the comments. I very much appreciate that. And also, hit the notification bell so you guys can see exactly when I post a new video. So, when the Hells Angels move into any neighborhood, as we've seen with my um, Suffolk County Hells Angels Club video, which I'll put in the description also, the neighborhood isn't exactly the most excited about the situation. Some neighbors are concerned about their property value going down. Other neighbors are concerned about their safety. Other neighbors are happy to have them around, thinking that they'll make the neighborhood more safe, which is very possible. You know, it's almost like living on a block with a police precinct. You think anyone's uh, robbing a house on the block the Hells Angels Club is on? I know I wouldn't. Um, so the whole town is confused as to why they allowed this club in a residential neighborhood and why they weren't alerted that it was going to be built there. It turns out it was a totally private transaction and they had no um, reason to actually report it. It was not necessary. Not, I'm looking for the right word. I found the word. It was not required that they reported that the Hells Angels were going to be buying the property. It was former American Legion property, which you go Google them. They are the nation's largest wartime veteran service organization aimed at advocating patriotism across the U.S. through diverse programs. That's read straight from their bio on their website. So nobody could uh, tell me I'm wrong in that one. Some neighbors actually said that when they first moved in, the club members were staring them down when they were outside. Who knows if that's true or not? It possibly is. Now, after some members made efforts to be neighborly, to try and convince the neighborhood that they were going to be good neighbors and they weren't bad guys. I got someone passing me on a double yellow right here. Even the Hells Angels lawyers reached out and made statements about how the Hells Angels are notoriously good neighbors, all that good stuff that they're supposed to say, which... It's not exactly the most true. I have a whole video also on the um, East 3rd Street location in Manhattan about all the stuff that went on there. Um, go check that it out. It's in the description. It's not worth me explaining. So after all that convincing the lawyers and the members did, remember they moved in in December 2019. January 2nd of 2020, the clubhouse was shot up around 10.30 p.m. about 14 times by the rival motorcycle club, the Pagans. They were sending a message like, hey, we're the motorcycle club in the Bronx, which they have a pretty big presence in the Bronx. And they were uh, showing their, um, their power, so to say. Ended up being a bad move on their part because May 2nd, at 3.20 p.m. in the middle of the day, 51-year-old Francisco Rosado, the pagan Bronx chapter leader, is executed leaving the building that he works at. Now he's killed on Holland Avenue and Boston Road. Two men hop out of a Jeep, Cherokee, and fire at Francisco, hitting him five times in the chest and neck and they killed him right there in the street. They also shot his buddy, 42-year-old Javier Cruz. They only shot him in the arm. This was all caught on video. Click that video in my description. At the end of the video, that surveillance footage is there. You can't
can't find the surveillance footage anywhere. I don't know how YouTube hasn't taken that video down. So when you see the video, be hush hush about it. On the left, this is the club. Doesn't look like anyone's really here. I'm gonna do a loop around and park. And we'll see how this goes. road it's like not even a road it's like a back alley if you guys go back and watch one of my earliest videos of edgewater park this is kind of like all the roads over there it's it's actually just a neighborhood if you're looking at this on a map it's directly north of this neighborhood so they sh oh my goodness they share some similarities quiet residential neighborhood is this Hells Angels clubhouse. You can understand why the neighbors felt some type of way about it since and look, they're butted up right next to houses. It's crazy to think. It really is a beautiful view out the back windows of these houses. This is the clubhouse. I'll get into all the details. This place actually got raided after the murder of Francisco Rosado. Um, they actually traced the route that the Jeep Cherokee took before the murder. 20 minutes, almost the full 20 minutes of the ride, taking uh, cell phone location data, and they even actually took surveillance footage off of city buses to um, comprise a full what do you call it a full route that they took to the place so that is the Hells Angels Club see they got the big camera on me like I always say my video gets more views you have the balcony up there those cool spider web uh, benches the big logo which oh, I wish the tree wasn't there gotta come back in the winter when there's no tree we'll zoom in on the logo up there yeah that's what I'm talking about those benches Hell's Angels New York City very crazy like I said smack in the middle of this neighborhood oh don't forget to say hi to the truck of course one last look. This place was raided on July 15th. So the murder happened on May 2nd. It was raided on July 15th. Two men were arrested as a result of that raid. They found a 25 caliber pistol in the nightstand of a back bedroom. In the same bedroom, they found a shotgun. A guy named... Daniel Canellis was arrested, 68 years old, I think. Another guy, Jesse Burke. Jesse Burke had a 9mm pistol. So Daniel Canellis was actually living in the clubhouse at the time. He was arrested during the raid. Um, also, the raid revealed that at the time, there was only 15 active Hells Angels members in the Bronx. Which, as we know, the Hells Angels is one of the biggest one percenter outlaw uh, motorcycle groups, motorcycle clubs. You never know what to say. If you call them a gang, it's a whole big problem. If you call them a group, maybe that's okay. They like to be called a club. I, 
uh, I've been guilty of calling them a gang plenty of times. Even in the video that is in the description, I started off uh, pretty strongly worded there, you'll, you'll see. Now, directly to the left, that is the Throgs Neck Bridge. So they're very, very close to the bridge. That's why this area of the Bronx is called uh, Throgs Neck. Makes sense. Oh, you know what I forgot to do for you guys? Show you this outfit I'm wearing. I'm getting back out of the truck. I'm getting back out of the truck. We'll finish the story outside. We get to take a real good look at the truck while I tell you the rest of the story. So, July 21st, 2020, police arrest two Hells Angels, 58-year-old Frank Loose Cannon Tatuli from the Bronx. Look how pretty that truck is. It's not even that clean, but look how it shines. 29-year-old Sayanon Thongthwath. Guess what his nickname was? Andy. He's from Queens. Those are both Hells Angels. And then 27-year-old Anthony DiStefano from the Bronx. He was a member of the Satan Soldiers, considered a feeder club for the Hells Angels. I almost forgot again to show you guys this outfit. Come on, head to toe. You guys think I could only dress like a street kid? What do you think I was? All right, let's get back in the truck. What am I doing out here? In arresting those three men, four handguns and three shotguns were recovered. The guy, Frank Loose Cannon, had a 38 revolver, a BB gun, and a 12 gauge shotgun in his house when he was arrested. So they all got brought up on second degree murder charges, manslaughter, and possession of weapons charges. Now you guys always say when I do videos like this, ah, oh, you gotta be careful, you always gotta be careful. Do you guys know I don't go out unarmed? Come on, I'm always strapped up. What are we talking about here? All right, hope you enjoyed the video. If you didn't, I don't really care. I'll see you in the next one.